Logistics startup Easy Haul has often been called Uber for trucks, matching empty trucks to shippers. But is that label really deserved? We talked to CEO and co-founder Raymond Gillen about the title and how it intends to grow in a highly fragmented business. So the first thing is, what is Easy Haul? Could you give us a brief background on your company for the very simple reason that it's been called Uber for trucking, but that's not completely accurate, is it? So the, uh, the Uber for trucking label for Easy Haul, um, we use it a lot to explain people that don't know anything about logistics to make them understand within one sentence what we do. But it is as much true as it is not true. So what we are actually are is a digital freight platform. Uh, and what we do is on that platform, shippers, our clients, so those could be companies that trade goods, could be manufacturers, distributors, but also logistics companies that don't own their own trucks um, can make bookings and those bookings would be routed to the transporters that have registered on our platform. So in essence, what the platform does, it connects shippers with truckers. Because you don't actually own a fleet, do you? We don't own our own trucks. So we are literally a platform. We are connecting party and connecting entity. So far, that looks a lot like what Uber does, right? Where you are passenger and you're being connected to someone that has a car and wants to drive you around. Uh, but um, I think that's also where the analogy stops because after the connection is made, the technology actually takes the, the shippers and the, the transportation companies through a series of steps uh, all the way from the pickup of the cargo to the delivery, including all the documentation, the invoicing, the electronic PODs, etc., etc. So, so that's it, that's really where um, sort of the differences are between the, the Uber concept and what we do as a as a platform. Where does EasyHall take a cut? So the way that our business model works is we basically take a commission on the transaction of, so in, a, in other words, if you're a shipper uh, and we would charge you a hundred, then we would deduct a certain commission mm. and essentially uh, we offer the balance to the transportation companies. You guys just closed a round of funding last year, right. uh, 1.2 million Singapore dollars. You say you're doing another round of funding this year again. Yep. Um, how close are you in that sense to your to the next round of funding? The reason that we raised funding again is because when we started the company very purposely, we chose Malaysia as our launch market. Uh, we've had some very in-depth looks in different markets in Southeast Asia, and we said, look, Malaysia is for us the market that we want to launch in but it's only the starting point. We have the vision that will become a leading platform in Southeast Asia within the next three to five years. So in order for us to expand to these other countries uh, and do this quick enough, uh, we need to raise additional funds. So the funds that we're raising now are intended for geographical expansion to other markets, as well as further expanding our, our um, IT, our technology product. What's your idea in terms of the cross-border transactions? Because you started with Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, Malaysia, Thailand is obviously, it, it makes sense to be the next one. I mean, how, how is that kind of going? Well, uh, it's very interesting you mentioned this because it's, uh, it's a segment that we are moving into more and more. So there's a lot of clients that are asking us, do you do cross-border? And so we've started doing this since a couple of months, both Singapore and Malaysia, as well as Malaysia, Thailand. Uh, and in essence, um, with the, the Asian community opening up and the uh, AAC coming up, uh, we expect that the volumes cross borders, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, all the way up to China and reverse uh, are going to grow substantially over the next probably three to five years. So we want to be positioned that by the time that that market really opens up, that we're going to be one of the leading platforms there to, uh, to, to deal with those volumes. What are your expansion plans for the country, you know, one year plus on? The thing is that even though we've been very successful and we're making some, some noise in the market, uh, we're still a very small company, right? If, I, if I'm realistic, uh, there is so much opportunity here in Malaysia in terms of bringing on board new clients, uh, in bringing on board new carriers, right? So expanding our, our supply base. But also with the existing clients, there's a lot more that we can do. With, uh, with a lot of these large clients that we've started working with, we're only handling a portion of their, uh, their total volumes. Mm. 
but I can see how there's an opportunity to continue growing as long as we go do a good job and prove the value to these clients. I get where that technology comes in, but even sometimes it can fail. Let me give you a very, very recent and very, very public example, mm -hmm. which is Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon in Singapore made a huge thing about launching Amazon Prime. You get thing in two hours. It was a complete and utter disaster. Mm. I mean, like, when, you, when even the big tech companies seem to mess it up, I mean, like, where do you guys sort of like, how, what lessons do you take from something like that? Yeah, look, I think everybody makes their mistakes. So the, the thing is that... It was a very uh, public uh, mistake. Well, though. of course, I mean, because it's been highly advertised, right, mm. that they were coming in. So everybody puts the little magnifier. So if one of those shipments goes wrong, all of a sudden, you know, it mm. blows up big headlines. Uh, so maybe, fortunately, we're not in that spotlight yet. Uh, but yeah, things do go wrong. But as a startup, I think you have the luxury to learn. Mm. And the the nice thing about it is that actually the, the people that we work with, the companies that we work with, they are a little bit more tolerant because they they do understand that you're a startup. But because we also uh, add that additional value compared to what they get from all their other providers and the fact that we really listen about what they want and then you know three weeks later we actually have it for them mm. uh, that provides a lot of goodwill so sure mistakes are always made but we learn from them and it's ma more a matter of how quickly do you adopt and improve